All right, here is the final quadrilaterals review um, before your quiz tomorrow. I'm sorry the first uh, video had no sound. I don't know what happened. All right. Okay, so let's talk about the properties of a parallelogram. So remember, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. And diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so let's start with our angles. Um, the angles are probably the harder ones to do with par with parallelograms. So AED is 101, and that's this angle right there. ADC, ADC, that's the big angle, and that's 63. ABE is 42, so that's this little one here. Actually, hold on a second. Made there. 62 didn't show up. Or 63, I'm sorry. Okay, so one thing we already have here is that opposite angles are congruent, which means this other angle over here is also 63. All right. And then ABE is 42. So if this portion of it is 42, to get the other side, we're going to subtract 63 from 42, and that gives me 21. All right. So because opposite sides are parallel, we also have alternate interior angles. So if this angle down here is 21, that means the one up here is also 21. And the one on the other side is 42. Okay. Now what we're going to use to find all the rest of the angles is triangle sum or supplementary angles. All right. So if we look at this triangle right here, I have 101 and 21. If I take uh, add those together and subtract it from 180, I'm going to pull out my calculator. So 180 minus 101 minus 21 gives me 58. Okay. So that's the remaining angle for that triangle, and that one's going to be 58. Okay. Now let's use that. Also, now let's find this angle here. And so we're going to, that forms a straight line, so there are, they are supplementary. So I'm going to subtract it from 180, and that gives me 79. Now I can use that to find this triangle using triangle sum. Okay, pull out the calculator again, do 180 minus 79 minus 42, and that gives me 59. All right, so that should be enough information now to get all my angles. <clears throat> so starting with the first one, BAE, so follow along. BAE is that one. I don't have a measure there, but I know we have alternate interior. So that's the same as the 59. D, B, C. Follow. D, B, C. That's that little one down there. And that is 21. B, E, C. Is this one right here. I don't have it, but I have a vertical angle. So that's 101. And B, C, D. That's this big angle here. Well, I only have half of it, but I have that 58 up there, which alternate interior is going to put it right here. So that gives me 58 plus 59, and that's 117. All right, so that's going to give me my, all my angles. Now let's do our sides. Sides are really easy. The opposite sides are equal, and the diagonals bisect each other. So I'm going to change the color. And the sides give me our A to C, that's my diagonal, is 22. So half of that is 11 and 11. B to E is 18, so that's here, which means the other side is also 18. A to B is 17, and B to C is 24. 
Okay, now let's fill in our blanks. D to C, well that's this side over here, it's going to be the same as the one opposite, so that's 17. B to D is the diagonal, so it's 18 and 18, and that's 36. And E to C is the 11. All right, so that is the parallelogram. Okay. Let's do the rectangle. All right, rectangle, properties of a rectangle are the, it's a parallelogram, so it has all the ones up above, but it also, the diagonals are congruent. And it has four right angles. Okay, so this is a right angle, this is a right angle, right angle, right angle. All right, so let's start with, and all of these are congruent because the fact the diagonals are congruent and they still bisect each other, those are all equal. And what that happens, what makes it, what now we have are some isosceles triangles where we're in that isosceles triangle, two angles are equal. All right, so let's get rid of some of this markings. All right, so I know that A to C is 12. I'll deal with the sides second, but let's start with the angles. A, D, E is 32. So this angle is 32. Okay. And because that this triangle right here is isosceles, this is isosceles, that means the other angle on the other side is also 32. And again, we have alternate interior angles, so this angle is 32, and then that one would be 32. Define this angle, since they have to add to be 90. If I take 90 minus 32, I get 58. So this is 58. And again, just like this is also an isosceles triangle, so this would be 58, 58, 58. Okay, now to get the angles in the middle, we're gonna use triangle sum. I have this triangle right here. I have the two angles are 32. So I'm gonna take 180 minus 32 minus 32. And that gives me 116. To get the other angle right here, I'm going to take 180 minus 116. And that's 64. All right, now I have enough to find all my angles. So angle DCB. DCB, well, that's the big one. So, and I know that it's going to be 90. AED is 116. D A E D A E that one's 32 B E A B E A I don't have it there but I know I see I, I see I have the vertical and that would make it 64 D E C is 64 and E A B is 58. Now to find the sides, we're going to use only one of these large triangles. So I'm going to use this large triangle right here. And I'm going to just redraw it over here. Where this is 58 and this is 32 because it's going to require us to do some trig. And I know from A to C is 12, so that's the diagonal. So I'm going to label this as X and this is Y. And now we'll find. So if you remember, I'm going to use the 58. It doesn't matter which angle you use. This side is opposite and then over 12. So that's the sine of 58 equals x over 12. Cross multiply. And you get five, 12 times the sine of 58 equals x. Pull out your calculator. 12 sine 58. Enter. And it's 10.1. 7, 7. 
on your quiz, you're going to be required to go round to three decimals. Make sure you round it to three decimals. Follow the instructions. All right, now we're going to do the same for, at, for y. y is adjacent, so that's going to be the cosine of 58 equals y over 12. So that's 12 times the cosine of 58 equals y. 12 cosine 58, 6.359. 6.359. So now we have enough to find our sides. So a to d is along the top. So that's going to be the same as x. And so that's 10.177. b to d is the other diagonal. So a to c is 12. B to, C is, B to D is going to be the same thing, so that's 12. D to C is the opposite side here, which was Y, and that's 6.359. All right, so that's the rectangle. Just one other thing. All of the, the quiz, every one of them is going to be a fill in the blank. So you are going to have to type in the answers. And if you type them in correctly, you should get, you'll find your score out really fast. Um, I will still go through and look at the wrong answers to see if you might have rounded inconsistently. And then I could, you possibly can earn back some points. All right, now let's go to the rhombus. Rhombus. Pro properties of a rhombus are all four sides are congruent. This time the diagonals are perpendicular. That means that this is a 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. Now, a rhombus is also a parallelogram, so it has all those properties of a parallelogram. But it does not have the properties of a rectangle, so do not get those two mixed up. All right. And that the diagonals bisect the angles. So it's splitting the angles in half. So if I look at my angles, and we're just going to start with the angles, A, B, E, is, this is 60 degrees. Because it's a bisected angle, it means it's 60 on the other side as well. And just like with the parallelogram, the opposite angles are the same, which makes both of these also 60. Now to find the remaining angles, we're going to use triangle sum. because I know we have a 90 degree angle in the middle, we have 60, that means we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is 30, same thing in the other side is gonna be 30, 30, and 30. So let's find our angles first. B, C, E is down here. That's a 30 degree angle. B, C, D, is two of all of them, so that's the 30 and the 30 makes that a 60. A, E, D in the middle is 90. All right, so now let's talk about the sides. So since these are all 32, all the way around, we need to find the diagonals. And because of the fact that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, it's a special triangle. So you're gonna need to know your special triangles. You're not gonna be able to use your calculator for this. All right, so I'm gonna draw our triangle right here. This is A, B, E. I highly recommend you label it with, this, with those, ver those, those letters. That way you know what you're looking at. So at B, I have the 60 degrees, and up here I have the 30. And this is 32. Using my special triangles pattern. So have that handy when you go to take the quiz. This side is A, this is A root 3, and this is 2A. Match them up. The 32 matches up with 2A. So that means A is equal to 16. A is on the bottom between B and E, or between the 60 and the 90, so between the 60 and 90, so that means this side is 16. And then the A root 3 is between the 90 and the 30, which is AE. And so that makes this 16 root 3. All right. So now let's see if we can't fill in some of the sides lengths. So A to D 
is 32. C to D, also 32. A to C is a diagonal. So, I know from A to E that this is 16 root 3, and it's the same over here. So I'm going to add those together. 16 and 16 is 32, square root of 3. All right, now I have B to E. B to E is the 16 we had. B to D is going to be all the way across, so it's going to be 16 and 16, or 32. All right, so that's a rhombus. Now, square. Square is the easy one. Square is a parallelogram, it is a rectangle, and it is a rhombus, so it has all the ones up above. And that actually makes it the easiest thing. It means all these angles are, 40, are 90, 90, 90, and 90. Because it is a rhombus, it means they're bisected, so this is 45 and 45, the same across the other side, and over here as well. So all the outside angles are 45. Inside, because it is also a rhombus, they're also perpendicular. Okay, so they're all 90 degrees. So let's figure our angles out. So ABE, or excuse me, BAE is 45. AEB, because it's in the middle, is 90. So that's it for the angles. Now, For the sides, because I know A to B is 6, I am just going, and I know this side is 6, this side is 6, all four sides are 6. I am actually going to just use half of this square, just like I used with the rectangle, and I'm going to use that to help me find the missing side length. Okay, so ABE or ABC is here. This is 6, this is 6 we're looking for this side. Well, because it's also a 45, 45, 90, because remember these were 45, take my pattern for 45, 45, 90. That's A, A, A root two. Match them up. Well, between the two 45s, that's the A and the C, that's the side that's missing. That matches up to A root two. A is going to be 6, so that makes that 6 root 2. So the full diagonal is 6 root 2. Okay, so now, and that's the same with the other diagonal. Let's fill in our blanks. B to C, we have a 6. D to C is also 6. D to B, that's a diagonal. Well, that's the same as this one, so that's 6 root 2. D to E is half of that. So 6 root 2 divided by 2, we're going to just divide those by 2, and that gives me 3 root 2. All right, that is everything for quadrilaterals. This will be the last video that I do, so you'll just have to keep re-watching this and practicing. There's, there are several worksheet sheets in the chapter, four, four, no, excuse me, chapter 7 folder, also in the school closings folder under essential skills and quadrilaterals. All right, if you have any questions, talk to me about it.